uh, uh, considering the array of um, situation in the Nigerian aviation industry, what would be your recommendation for the situation to prevent mishaps in the nearest future? Um, the first one would be um, we need to look at our safety records over the years. And that means that um, all the practitioners, both pilots, engineers, uh, administrators, ground staff, need to rethink um, how they approach safety. Um, when we see something, we should all be able to speak up on time so that we can document it, analyze it, and then hopefully uh, remove the threat before it becomes catastrophic. Okay. Looking at what is available in terms of facilities at the airports, do you think, um, based on assessments now, we have um, enough of what it takes to run a good airport as good enough to be able to prevent um, issues like this in the future? Um, the facilities, yes, are lacking. Um, they, they need improvement, that's true. Um, but even, even having said that, uh, it doesn't mean that we still can't run a safe uh, and efficient uh, airline. We have done so since 2006, since we last had this issue. So it's not really that. I think it's something more inherent, the way we probably approach safety. Safety, like I said earlier, is everybody's business. Uh, as long as the, the man who is in the training room realizes that safety is his business and takes it seriously, the pilot knows safety is his business and takes it seriously. So even the passenger, um, I think all of that, plus the facility, working together, because it's not one thing, it's all things working together will provide us with a safe and efficient airline service in Nigeria. A lot of people have recommended or suggested that it is okay to come up with an independent body that will serve as, um, that will give some checks and balances to uh, the aircraft's management uh, in general. Would you support this uh, type of suggestions or idea? Uh, I think there's already an independent body, and that body is uh, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. By the um, law, the, Niger the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority is independent of the Ministry of Aviation, or is supposed to be and they act independently of every airline within the country. Now their job statutorily is to uh, audit and inspect airlines to ensure that they're doing the right thing. Um, they're performing their duties as at when due and they have a safe service. And if I should ask, sir, like in going about investigations, will it be right to, uh, that analytically, will it be right to um, call to order the current uh, management of these um, independent bodies that serve as checks and balances on the aviation sector in Nigeria. Because these are some of the suggestions that people or that analysts, public analysts have raised, that the management should be called to order and then given accounts of their, of their job in general. Would this be a right recommendation as well? I think that's a bit preemptive um, because we don't really know what the cause of the accident is and we're assuming that the cause of the accident is because the um, independent body, the regulatory body, is not doing its job. I think that's preemptive. I think we, should, we need to really wait and see what the accident investigators will come up with. It could be something that's completely unrelated that has caused the accident on that particular day and that's got nothing to do with the authority. Like I said earlier, the um, authority can only do snapshot inspections. They can't inspect every aircraft every time. They can only do snapshots. So the illness is on the operator its personnel, its pilots, its engineers to ensure that every dispatched flight is safe for use. What should be the age of an aircraft that should be used for commercial purposes like this in Nigeria? Good question. Um, there's, no, there's no such uh, uh, age for an aircraft. I think that's a commercial decision. As an aircraft gets older, it gets, becomes more expensive to maintain it, to keep it airworthy. So that's a commercial decision. If your bottom line is being affected by maintenance, then it's best for you to get rid of it and get a new aircraft. Again, that's another problem, because newer aircraft are even as more expensive. So it's a chicken and egg thing. Which one do you do? So it's up to the financial boys to decide how they're going to manage, manage that. Uh, for an engineering point of view, um, an aircraft is only as good as the last maintenance. So as long as aircraft is being maintained, to specification as laid down by the authority and the original manufacturer, then the aircraft's good to go. Finally, it has always been argued in Nigeria here that um, the management of the airports in general uh, plays a lot of charges on the whole uh, facilities that they manage for the airline companies and that this keeps boiling down on the uh, manner in which the airline uh, facilities and companies are being run. That is one of the reasons why they've not been able to do certain things and put other necessary things in order. Do you think this is true? Um, yes, if you look at the cost of running a business in Nigeria in general and the cost of running aviation in Nigeria, in Nigeria it's very expensive. 
uh, Nigeria has one of the most expensive land landing fees in, in Africa and in the world. Uh, it is expensive to uh, maintain your aircraft in Nigeria. Um, also, because we don't have local facilities for maintenance, we have to do everything in dollars. Um, so if the government is charging you, several agencies are charging you for one service, you have multiple charges, your expenses are also in dollars for parts, for training, then it becomes very expensive. So now, how much is it for one ticket from Lagos to Abuja? These are the issues. So again, the financial boys have to really be careful as to what they do with their numbers to be sure that they have enough profit to run the airlines. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Well, we have some financial challenges, uh, not to the extent that we do not have enough money, but possibly maybe we need more money. Access to funds also uh, is a big challenge, also because uh, the Nigerian nation uh, is not quite there yet in the rating uh, that we get the right uh, kind of funding at the right rates uh, when, you, when you need them. So funding is coming to the operators at a relatively higher rate compared to excuse me, <clears throat> some other countries where uh, funding will not only come easy, but it also comes uh, in, in comp at, com at comp competitive rates. So I would say funding is one of the major issues. The other issue I would say is uh, the infrastructure uh, that are available at the moment. Okay, now uh, we have the total radar coverage going on, uh, which I think is uh, is very positive, but we still have a few challenges in um, the airport facilities. Uh, I'll give an example. If you fly from Ghana to Nigeria, maybe it takes about 45 minutes. Sometimes uh, it takes you two hours to get your baggage. Um, I, I know that we're doing uh, quite a few things now in facelifting the uh, airport, which is also good because uh, aviation is not just a means of moving people from one place to, to the other. It's, it also has that tourism potential. People just want to visit your country and it's your first port of call. So um, if I land in an airport and what, meets, uh, what I meet on ground is not exactly what I expect to meet, I already form, a, I form an image about that country and it most likely we inform my decision to want to come back or never to come back. So uh, the remodeling of the airport to me is, is, is a value-added thing to the existing infrastructure. But I would say there are very, very germane and more important issues that are still behind the scene. Uh, to me, that is just uh, the beauty of the outer space. What about the inner beauty? The things that make this uh, industry work inside needs to also be focused on. Um, so, and also, um, the, the, we need to be also, uh, government still needs to play the, their part in terms of uh, support, uh, policies, uh, and, and uh, some, some government pronouncements. Uh, I'll, I'll give an example also. Um, the cost that the average aviation service provider or airline pays on spares, on tooling, is I can't even express it. It's the, the tax you have to pay on importing space to maintain those aircraft. They are huge. So it actually makes uh, airliners fly maybe two days, three days too long on minimum equipment list than it should be because of the prohibitive cost of getting space in. Also, the logistics of even getting it, sometimes it lands at the airport and the agency that's supposed to help uh, make this thing get into country makes it take even longer than necessary. So we will be needing government intervention in that regard to pass policies maybe and give some kind of tax incentives to uh, aviation operators uh, when it comes to their space, even on importation of aircraft. Trust me that we gain it back in many other ways in terms of increasing GDP, its effect on the economy generally. Uh, and efficient companies also pay VAT, uh, despite the fact that they also have to pay some of those charges on the importation of space and even the aircraft itself.